Lipkin. Hello, Dimitri. Hey. Uh, it's a really big f pleasure having you here uh, at the conference. So you're a team tech lead at uh, a machine learning architect at Data Art. Uh, you've been leading clients mach machine learning and data science projects in insurance, finance, healthcare. Uh, so, could you explain a bit more what kind of projects were you leading and what are you especially proud of uh, during your time at Data Art? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the great question. So, I must say that I am proud of uh, the platform we are doing right now and the, the talk I was having. It's about routine automation in data science. But, of course, uh, Data Art is a service and consultants company, so we did a number of projects for our clients. For instance, we did uh, for one of insurance tech companies who are selling uh, like car insurances, the project to predict the, the revenue for their clients so they can change uh, UI user interface so the user can uh, generate uh, more revenue for the company and get the best like insights uh, or the best offers for, for the car insurance. So it, it was a great project and uh, I, I'm speaking about it because it was one of the successful ones as in machine learning it, it, it's really rare of. And yeah, the, the tool we are doing, it's a really great uh, way to automate your routine, to focus on the complex tasks. And we have a great big team of 15 people right now. And uh, I'm really glad to have this team and to lead this project for now. Yeah. And going further on that project to automate routine work uh, around data science, you co actually co-founded the project. Yeah. Uh, so could you go into a bit more specifics? Yeah, sure. So uh, it, it was not only me, it was uh, also... Uh, my my partner and uh, some of our uh, VP level uh, people who uh, like I say invested uh, our time into that and uh, there was one client who wanted to uh, f who wanted us to show the engineering excellence who wanted us to you know uh, show him something uh, ab above the usual uh, approach so uh, we uh, finally developed one tiny thing of this platform and we thought that it worked really well. And uh, it, it uh, pushed us on, on the competition. We were using it uh, to top 3%. It's like 250 teams around, uh, of around uh, 7,000. So it's not not bad result on pure automation. And we thought, okay, let's scale it, how we do it. And we tried to do product management, to do user research. And we found out that, okay, let's, let's focus on business. Let's automate the routine. Let's make it like triangle between technology, business, and routine. And do this platform in the middle where we automate uh, non-interesting tasks and using this uh, tool, small tool which we developed, using it as, as one of the services, extend it to, to different types of uh, services as well. Oh, that does sound like it has much bigger potential. So what are your plans for that project going further into the future? So we are, uh, we are having MVP uh, now and I uh, was presenting it. At, it's available uh, for public uh, for free for now. And uh, we are finding our clients. Uh, so currently we are using uh, and focusing on uh, understanding uh, what problems we can solve with it and uh, what business domains so that we can uh, tune our uh, client uh, portrait better. So we have a couple of uh, like ideas of what it should be. And then uh, we will scale it, like uh, our goal is to scale it. And then we will uh, think about how to, on, on which types of projects we need to do it, uh, what should we add there and how to explain data scientists that it's not like AI who is replacing you, it's like augmented uh, intelligence that is helping you to proceed and help the clients. Uh, thank you for that. And looking a bit more at the bigger picture, um, where do you think that auto ML can be applied and what are, in your opinion, the main advantages and limitations of it? So uh, the limitations are that uh, it will not create you the best model, the best data science automation in the world because it's not possible at all. Data science is not like domain which can be easily automated. Uh, but, but what it can do, it can enhance specific parts of your work. And for instance, if you are doing like customer churn prediction, you want to understand how many clients in the next three weeks will uh, go uh, to different product using different similar product. So if you do this one time, two times, three times, on the tenth time, like it, it's crazy to do it. So that's why we are trying to find the use cases which are solvable across the industries and automate this solution for new and uh, different companies who are not doing that. But we for sure think that they need to do it. So this is our goal. Uh, we, that's why we are focusing on, on the companies who, uh, who wants to do data science and they do not want to spend a lot of money and we do not use cases before we go to them. 
uh, which can be solved, definitely. So that's what we do. Yeah, so it sounds quite interesting. And this is your first DSC event, yeah. uh, and hopefully not the last one. We do hope you join us in other events. So what was uh, the biggest takeaway so far from, from the event? Well, uh, I like uh, I like the keynote speakers. Uh, it was uh, really interesting to see this uh, view of uh, why uh, AI is not. Uh, I think it's not available. It's not. It's not can be uh, created like something like that. Interesting topic, and uh, like uh, I like that uh, the organization is good. So you, we have everything here, uh, all, all that is needed. So yeah, I think that uh, topics are good and. Uh, it seems to be great. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the kind words. And as I said, I do hope you join us in other events as well. Yeah. Uh, that's it for the interview. Thank you once again for thank joining. You. Thank you for having me. My name is Dmitry Baikov. I'm from DataArt. Welcome to Data Science Conference Europe. And let's change the world through data.